Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a lesson made for grade two or grade three. The topic is clothing and what will you wear? So essentially, we're going to be reviewing the weather, which if you haven't taught that lesson, I definitely recommend you teach that lesson before you try to teach this lesson because it's a, it's a very important uh, set of vocabulary that you're going to need in order to do the full dialogue, which is present in this lesson. So, you know, we're going to learn, we're going to review the days of the week, which for my grade twos is something we do all the time. So if you haven't taught the days of the week to your class, um, I definitely recommend you do that as well before you try to teach this lesson. Um, for my class, I go over the days of the week every week as part of the warm up, so my kids all know it. So the dialogue in this lesson is, how's the weather on and one of the days of the week? So for example, how's the weather on Tuesday? The students need to say, it's whatever the weather is that I have set up on the PowerPoint. You know, it's uh, cold and windy, you know, it's hot, very hot and humid or whatever it is. And then what will you wear on Tuesday? On Tuesday, I will wear, and they can select two articles of clothing. In this lesson, I'm teaching 12 articles of clothing, so I wouldn't recommend teaching this class to grade one unless your kids are quite good. Uh, my grade twos, you know, it was just hard enough that it was interesting for them. Uh, for grade three, you know, it depends on the level of your students. Maybe this is more appropriate for grade three students or even grade four, depending on the level of English of your own students. So you need to make that call on your own. Um, like I said, everyone has different students, so I can't tell you which grade it would be appropriate for. That's why I'm showing you the PowerPoint in this run through so you can see it slide by slide and make the call yourself. Is this lesson appropriate for your students? Or if it is, at what level? You know, so um, if you want to purchase this lesson, don't forget, click the link in the video description below and you can download it there. Or you can go to my Taobao store and you can find it there. Um, like I said, I would teach the weather lesson before I teach this. Uh, I have um, three lessons I think it should be taught before this. One is just basically the weather. One is the seasons and the weather. And then I also have one with the seasons and different activities you do in the season. So you can find all of those lessons um, in my Taobao store or go on my YouTube or Billy Billy. You should be able to find them all there as well. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, if you do, don't forget to smash the like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and leave a comment below if you have any questions. All right, let's get right into the run through. All right, let's have a look at this PowerPoint. So again, this is a run through. Um, I'm not going to really explain too much, just a little bit. Uh, the point of the run through is just to show people the PowerPoint in case they wanna purchase it themselves and teach it to their own class or if they wanna model their own PowerPoint after my PowerPoint's design. I think showing every slide is important and you can see exactly uh, the way I have it, which works quite well for large public school classes. All right, so I'll just go through every slide. There'll be a few spots where I stop and I'll say a few things, but not really too many, too many times. So in this class, we're teaching the reason the days of the week. So it's important to review that. I do it every, in almost every class for grade two anyway, so they know it really, really well by the time I even get to this lesson. Um, this lesson is dealing with clothing. So we're going to review the weather because obviously the weather is going to affect what clothing we're going to wear. And that's the setup for the whole class is, you know, how's the weather? And then what are you going to wear? Because the weather is the way that it is. So first we're reviewing all the weather and here we have cloudy, rainy, sunny, windy. You can show the kids, they should know, we taught this previously. You can find this lesson in my store as well. You can purchase it as well before you obviously teach this lesson. It's too much to just teach all the weather, all the clothing and everything all at once. So obviously this is a prerequisite lesson. That's why it is the review. Um, I do recommend, you know, building your own lesson for this or purchasing my lesson and teaching it prior to trying to attempt to teach this class about clothing. Um, it's just too much. I designed this class for grade two. I think it can be used for grade three as well. Um, there are 12 articles of clothing you're gonna see. So it'll be a bit much if you teach it to grade one unless they're quite good. So. Uh, first, I want to you know set it up so you know how's the weather on Monday, and now we need to you know say the weather that we just saw. Before I was asking you know how's the weather in each season, um, and now like each day of the week is going to have a different forecast. You can see, so it's going to it's going to affect you know what clothing they decide to wear on that day. So that's the point of the lesson. How's the weather on each day of the week? Okay, and then what will you wear because the weather is is the way it's going to be on that day? All right, so we go through each day of the week and we and we you know set it up and then we're going to get into the clothing all right 
Okay, so the next part of the lesson is the clothing. So I'll go through each one and show you what it looks like. Um, like I said, I did choose eight articles of clothing for this lesson um, because it's appropriate for most grade twos should know like the basic clothing. They probably learned it. Um, some of them learned it in kindergarten. Some of them learned it in grade one. Um, obviously you have to make a judgment with your own students. You know, if you think it's too difficult, then don't teach it to grade uh, two. You know, that's why I say this class is for grade two or grade three. I think most grade threes should have some knowledge of clothing. They should probably know at least, you know, five or six um, articles of clothing, t-shirt, you know, trousers. They're going to know some of these. Um, hat, they're going to know scarf. It's in a ton of uh, ESL songs for little kids. So some of them are harder, like sunglasses, a pair of sunglasses, they're hard. Uh, for my grade twos, I would say the majority of the kids knew about half of the words, which is fine. I don't expect my students to know or to learn everything the first time I teach it. Um, you know, it's a process. You expose them to it the first lesson, then you show it in the ensuing, you know, five, six lessons until they really learn it. So after you show them all, uh, go through them again. And I would say in my class for grade two, and my grade twos are pretty good, um, they all knew a t-shirt, a scarf, uh, a hat, a jacket. They all knew a cap. I was just teaching them baseball. They all know a sweater. Okay, so the ones they really didn't know, and my kids are pretty good, were, uh, well, some of them knew a raincoat, but sunglasses, I would say almost no one knew it. Gloves, maybe one or two. Rain boots, um, yeah, they most of them didn't know it. Um, a raincoat, the majority didn't know. Uh, jeans, I think a decent amount knew. So you can see there's probably five, five or six words that I had to teach to most of the class, but the other ones they were familiar with. So you have to make a judgment with your own class. If you if you think this class is good for your grade fours, then you know teach it to grade four. I just say grade two or grade two and three, just because that's what I think is appropriate. But everyone is going to have um, you know have to make a judgment with their own class. So after that, we play a quick say game. You know, I say the word, they say the number. Then I say the number, they say the word. It involves the whole class. And then this activity where the students have to, they can, we're split up in teams, right? So I'll call on team by team for them to choose one of the, the articles of clothing. And then they say what it is. I click on it and their team gets points. Okay, so there's triggers set up here. So you can click any order you want based on what they say and they get points. Little kids get really excited about this and it's a good way for them to have to recall what the words were they just learned. Um, you know, if you have your kids in little groups, they can discuss together how to say, you know, I'm not gonna be critiquing them on the pronunciation. If they, if they try to say, and I understand what they're saying, I'll click on it and then if they say it wrong, even if they say it right, I'll say it again and have the whole class repeat after me. You know, it doesn't matter if they say it right or wrong, don't criticize them, give them build their confidence, you know. And then we move on to the next part of the lesson, which is the slow reveal game. Kids absolutely love this game. Um, essentially, it slowly reveals one of the flashcards and the first student to say what it is gets points for their team. And all of the words are here on the left so that you know, you're not asking the kids to remember out of thin air what they were, because that's really difficult. You have to click on it, it, it brings it up and you know, causes it to flash so they can, they can all see it. So it's really a fun game. Kids absolutely love this game for grade two, grade three, grade four. You know, I even have grade fives that like it. It gets old with grade five, so you can play it a few times, but obviously I wouldn't do it more than a few times in the year with older students. But with grade two, I mean, you could literally do it every single time you introduce new words and every single time they're gonna like it. That's just, it's just a fun game for them. Um, I don't have all of the words here for this slow reveal game because it'll take forever for all 12. I'm not sure exactly how many I put here. Um, we'll see. But I just chose the ones I thought, you know, they probably needed a little more help with and sprinkled a few of the easy ones in as well to build their confidence, you know. So it's a great game. It's fun. It's easy. And yeah, let's move on to the next part. All right. So in teaching part three, we're going to go through um, all of the, the words that I need to make sure they know, like the word will. Um, for grade two, I would say only about three of my students in every class knew this, so it was something new, something that they didn't know. And I want to, you know, the concept of the future, the future tense. Most students don't learn this till grade four, I'd say, in the public school, maybe grade five, but it's important language, okay? And the word where, some of the kids are going to know this already, and they're all going to know put on because it comes up in a lot of ESL songs. 
And then we're going, going to teach the question and the answer. So what will you wear on Monday? On Monday, I will wear and let the students choose what they want. Call on some students, let them choose. And same thing for what we wear on Tuesday, let them choose, okay? They're gonna wanna say what they want based on what the weather is. That's why we taught and reviewed the weather because it's gonna come into play. If it's warm and cloudy, what do you wear if it's warm and cloudy? And the kids like it because they can say, you know, their own thinking, which I think is important. Don't just tell them what they should say. If, if they'd say some funny stuff like, oh, it's snowing and they're gonna wear a t-shirt, I'll be like, but it's very cold, you know? All right, so now we're gonna play the choose a game a choose a day game, excuse me. And the way it works is, it's like kind of the full dialogue. How's the weather on? And they can choose one of the days of the week. They say what the weather is, then you click that day of the week and it takes you to the next slide where they can say uh, the, the question answer that we just went over. And let's say, okay, it's very hot and sunny. They say, I'm gonna wear a t-shirt and shorts. They get points, okay? Um, you know, you can go back, you click here, it goes back to the, the original slide, bring up the next team. How's the weather on Friday? All right, click on Friday. All right, uh, what we wear on Friday? Okay, it's very cold and snowy. I'll wear a pair of gloves and a scarf. Okay, if you, you can tell them if they wanna say three things, they can. Uh, but you have to be consistent. Let every team say three things. So they can all get, you know, three sets of points. And again, rinse and repeat. You know, click on Wednesday, it's gonna go to Wednesday. You click on um, Monday, it's gonna go to Monday, obviously. Okay, so that's the way that, that activity works. And then afterward, we're getting toward the end of the class now. You know, so this is at the end of the class, uh, you know, how's the weather on? And again, same thing again. Um, this time, don't click on, you don't have to click on the, the slides here. I mean, the each different day of the week, it just goes directly. If you click on to the next one with all the days of the week showing, all of the weather showing, all of the clothing showing. And here they don't get points, but it's just a way for them to review. And these two slides, this slide and the, and the, and the this slide and this slide. I would copy and paste those into all of my future lessons for the next, you know, month so they can review. Okay, so it's very convenient. And that's the whole PowerPoint. You know, it's 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 simple enough that the kids are gonna be able to do it. I try to keep my lessons pretty streamlined, scaffolded in a way that makes sense. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that and got some value out of it. Don't forget if you want to purchase this lesson, go to my Taobao store, click the link below. And yeah, you can purchase it very, very, very quickly and uh, painlessly. All right, I really hope you guys found that useful. Don't forget, if you wanna purchase this lesson yourself, go to the uh, link in the video description below and you can download it there or go to my Taobao store and you can find it there as well as a lot of other lessons. So I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget, smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.